Throughout my early 20s, I was a pretty obnoxious overweight man whose only obsession was to make Let's Play videos as a career. I was too timid to get into working out or even learn about martial arts, but I did love to skateboard since I grew up doing so. Here's what my groceries looked like before, and today we're going to modify it to be more weight loss and muscle building friendly. I'm probably not going to use everything you see here because some of these items I don't have and doesn't exist in my town and I can't drive an hour away to pick up some of these ingredients until I get an oil change, but I am telling you, it will help with the weight loss journey. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and get the week started. It turns out I poorly planned the first week and didn't record as much as I'd hoped, but that doesn't mean I didn't put in work. I still ran on the treadmill and had the meals that I planned out for the episode. I have one more workout before my deload week, so I'm going to show that right now. Alright, so I typically warm up with jumping rope for about a minute. I often messed up a lot, so I decided to go for a minute straight without fail in this clip, which I've never done before, and boy was it rough. <laughs> Those 60 seconds felt like an eternity. I wanted to add double unders into the mix, but that requires speed and I found it difficult to alternate between the singles and doubles. You can tell that I'm beginning to fatigue after 40 seconds in. I'm moving slower, slightly struggling to jump, and all that was going through my head was that I wish this was over, which you shouldn't really be thinking about when you're warming up, so I'm going to practice boosting my endurance regarding the jump rope. Either way, all that matters in the warm-up is that you get your heart rate going, so you get pumped for the actual workout. I feel like if you don't warm up, then your performance in the workout will perish, and you'll eventually get frustrated and give up. I've noticed that when I performed Russian dips and got frustrated because I couldn't even do more than one rep. And you can tell right here, I am starting this struggle. And at the end right here, I'm gonna try to do a double under, but I failed. <laughs> Alright, so I'm currently on an A and B split program that consists of 4 exercises, 3 sets, 5 to 8 reps, 2 to 3 minute rests, and a burnout set per exercise. This is my B split, and what I do is start off with Russian dips, which is an advanced dip exercise that really works the triceps and deltoids. It's tough to do this on my dip station because of the lack of elbow space, but I find it helpful if you're training to learn the muscle up. So after that, I go straight into a burnout set, typically an easier exercise in which I chose assisted dips, and I try to do as many as I can until failure or fatigue. Next up, I'm working on wide grip pull-ups. I'm still fairly new to this exercise, so I've only been able to manage to do 5 reps. Plus, I do just suck at pulling exercises in general, but I'm working on these just so I can have those crazy wide lats that look like wings. And for my burnout, I decided to do assisted chin-ups. Those wide grip pull-ups destroyed me, and honestly, I think it's the hardest exercise in this program, so I wasn't able to get as many assisted chin-ups as I had hoped to aim. Now moving on to Nordic Curl Negatives. These help strengthen my hamstrings. Don't rush the movement or it will defeat the purpose of the exercise. I wish I had bought a bench with a leg curl feature to it, but made a poor investment and bought a flat bench. So my alternative choice was to put a bench onto the weights into the sofa and hope that it will be heavy enough to withstand my leg strength. Though I do need to find another way to do this because I don't want to damage my parents' sofa. For the burnout, I decided to do elevated glute raises. Feels like this exercise is most effective to the glutes when you squeeze your legs together while raising your butt up. Without the leg squeeze, doesn't really feel like it's doing much for you. This final exercise is my favorite one of all, the standing ab will roll out. An issue that everyone has with this exercise, even with the kneeling version, is the strain on the lower back. What I found helpful to feel less strain on the lower back is to keep your chest pumped, squeeze your belly button in, and keep your core and butt tight. This is a pretty uncommon exercise that not a lot of people can do, so I'll have a tutorial planned for the future on how I learned it. And for the final burnout, I did plank knee to elbows. Again, keeping the movement slow is the most effective, and I keep this going until I start to feel the burn in my core, and that pretty much just wraps up my workout. I did burn 100 calories on the treadmill after finishing each exercise before the 2-3 minute rest, which is a total of 400 calories burned, so I was completely wiped out after this. I was just looking forward to that refeed day already. 
So at the end of January 29th, I'm standing at 153.2, so I dropped 2.6 pounds. I went 10,000 steps twice throughout the week, but only 7,800 during the B-Split program. Pretty happy with the hard work I put in, but of course I still got a ways to go before I could see a difference in my body. Alright, it's Monday, deload week, and I decided I'm going to take it easy for today. I'm not going to like run 10,000 steps. And for the meal that I'm going to be having just to start it all off is some chili because chili was a staple of my old diet, so might as well make some of it. 96% lean, 4% fat, so it's going to be pretty lean chili. Alright, time to chow down. After the chili, I had some anabolic chocolate ice cream. And of course, my parents brought me pho when I told them a thousand times that I'm doing this weight loss journey. Makes it harder because the amount of unknown carbs just makes me hungrier, but I'm going to play along and accept the challenge. Alright, now I'm at the local college to get my 10,000 steps. Physical education. This is where my major resides. And yet, there's not much to it. Alright, so this entire trail is about two to three miles, so let's go ahead and get some work done. All right, that was a fun cardio session. Yeah, so this is my current pathway at the moment. I'm on exercise science. All right, I hit exactly 10,000 steps. So I did find the fitness center. It's called the Fitness Lab, but it looked busy in there, so I'm gonna go there next time. So for my post-cardio meal, I decided to have lean beef chili dogs, which is a total of 495 calories, 16 grams of fat, 46 grams of carbs, and 52 grams of protein. Pretty tasty, but not very filling for my food challenge appetite, but I had to fight off the hunger until midnight and only have 1,000 calories due to the fud that my parents brought me back, so I went ahead and had the anabolic chocolate ice cream, along with some vegan jerky and pitos to end the day. Right when midnight hit, I decided to have some lean beef congee with an egg. Halfway through the week, I decided to do a few hours of nunchaku training. I just recently learned wrist rolls, so pardon if it looks sloppy during this recording. I have gotten a little bit better at it since. Slowly entering the intermediate phase of nunchaku, which is really exciting. And in the middle of this training session, I decided to go get some groceries for the upcoming meal. Alright, I'm off to the grocery store right now to get my next meal. So what I'm thinking of is getting some 50-50 basmati and shirataki rice. And I'm going to be eating it with some uh, light spam and also some pasture-raised eggs. So I already had the pasture-raised eggs, I just really need to get some spam light. There we go. Here's the setup of the meal. This was the main meal that I used to have all the time. Despite how my old diet was generally junk food, I did eat broccoli from time to time, so I decided to add it here. I used to drink normal Milo sweet teas, so I decided to switch it with the zero calorie version. Had a bottle of water on the side, and of course you know the rest. Went back to Nunchaku training, and I learned another wrist roll movement that I thought looked really cool. But it did take a while, I did break a couple fingernails, and I smashed my thumb. After that, I did have a few snacks to end the day. I used to love eating Slim Jims and Swedish Fish, so these are the best alternatives I could find on them. And right when midnight hit once again, I decided to have my version of a double quarter pounder with cheese, considering that this was something I always ordered in my old diet when I ate McDonald's. Alright, I'm out to get my 10,000 steps yet again, and this time I am going to skate in addition because I haven't skated since September. 
And also, it was just a thing that I did back in the day. So let's see how it goes. All right, time to go skate. I'm gonna put my skate shoes on. So this is out of the blue. Somehow there's a crack right on the nose, so I won't be able to do anything gnarly or fakey. All right, I'm gonna do a switch flip off this ledge like I did seven years ago. All right, decently fun session. I didn't do much, but I mean, that's what I was like back in the day because I was that out of shape. But now I'm gonna be going to Walmart again, going to a different one this time. I always park super far just to get some extra miles in. I mean, I don't have to, but it's just icing on the cake. These were the smartest things I got in my diet, so I'm getting those, 98 cents for each. Got a Slim Jim alternative here. All right, I'm having congee again after that cardio session. This has and always will be a staple of my diet. All right, last meal before the weigh-in. So this is my terrible version of a calzone, but what matters is the calories. And I got a chopped turkey stick. All right, it's Friday. I'm trying to get my last 10,000 steps in, but somehow I think I might've sprained my ankle. This is the same ankle that I keep spraining when I was doing the whole skateboarding stuff back in the day. So I don't know if this has anything to do with my diet because this has never happened before. Like, I had a sprained ankle just running on the treadmill. I seem to be walking just fine now, so I guess that was just a temporary sprained ankle, so I'm going to continue getting my 10k steps. I've probably already shown this, but this is how I start off my refeed days. I always make bunryu, or what they call it in English, crab tomato noodle soup. I always look forward to this, and that's why I work super hard throughout the weeks. Alright, time to weigh in. So I ended up gaining 1.2 pounds, which isn't a surprise considering the fub, but I notice I'm beginning to look a little leaner, so it goes to show that the number on the scale isn't everything. Alright, so I hope you all enjoyed this episode of the weight loss journey. This modified old diet was a two week project, so last week I killed it with a 2.6 pound loss. This week didn't do great because I gained a pound, and I'm pretty sure it's because of the pho. Didn't know what the calories was. I'm pretty sure it was loaded with fat because there was a ton of meat in there. So the calories are just unknown, the carbs and all that. So that's probably why I gained a pound. So it's no big deal. At least I'm not at 155 because then I'd be like right at the beginning again. I had a lot of fun running around all these different trails and also did a little bit of skating in the video, which honestly was probably the most boring part of the video. I didn't really enjoy it as much as I'd hope. I feel like I kind of grown out of it. Like, I've been doing it for 18 years, so it's gotten to a point where it's so monotonous, it's not as fun as it used to be. I get more of a rush doing stuff like working out in martial arts. Next week is Chinese New Year's, so I guess the next episode is going to be themed based off of that. So I guess I'm just going to come up with some random workout just for fun. And uh, we'll see how it all pans out for the next episode. So I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video. Stay awesome, Kitty Sabres.